Hi everyone, my name is Anvita Bansal and today's lecture will be based on recursion. So we will be starting this topic and let's see what you can expect from today's lecture. So we will be starting with understanding the basics of recursion, then what is base case, how recursion is handled or stored in memory, then difference between recursion and iteration and coming on to what is tail recursion. So let's start what is recursion. So recursion basically it's a process, it's a technique in which a fu function makes call to itself only repeatedly. Function calls itself only. Now what do you mean by this? When a function calls itself that process is known as recursion. Okay that is recursion. And the function and the function which it is which is being called repeatedly is known as recursive function. Okay. Now what is the use case of function calling itself? How does it matter to us? First thing what it does is it reduces the length of code first of all it reduces the length of code and also what it does is it focuses on solving smaller sub problems and after getting answers from smaller sub problems it creates answer for the bigger ones and that is how it returns the final answer okay so these are some things which i have verbally now told you let's understand how it actually happens so if i talk about let's say you want to okay you want to add numbers let's add first n natural numbers that is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 let's say I am giving you n as 5 and you want to add 5 natural numbers what can you do you are doing what what you are doing at every step you are adding the next in number right so how recursion can make this problem solve in smaller number of lines let's see let's say we have written a function sum okay and we are passing an integer n fine then what do we want is let's say that we want the sum of all the numbers starting from 1 to n that is what we want how recursion can help this let's do one thing first thing is that first thing is function calls itself so let's call the function i am calling the function sum itself and what i am doing is i am giving n minus 1 and i want to return that answer whatever I am getting from n minus 1 that should be added to the current integer that is the number n and that's what I want to return right now you will not understand it will seem very vague to you all but I will explain what does what are we doing here so I want to show you that till now till here you are actually calling the function for previous numbers and adding the current number to it and you are saying return that first thing that okay you are making call to that sum function but how will you stop it in order to understand this first let's understand it pictorially that what is happening and what is going to happen this is incomplete this is not complete only thing i have done in this function is that i am repeatedly calling sum for n minus 1 numbers okay so what ideally we want to ha happen is that we are in a function we are passing let's say function we are passing initially 5 what 5 will do recursion expects that it will call its own function for number 4 and that will be added to the current number we will see how then it will further call function 3 the same problem is being called again for different integers every time which we are handling via this parameter parameter is the integer that means for that time we are calculating what is the sum we are going to return for 4 okay and at every step i am actually adding my current number as well so whatever answer will be returned by this function that will be added to my current integer so for what number did i make this call of function 4 i made this call for 5 and that should 
actually be added to the answer that I will get from function 4. Okay, 5 plus. Now this function call has been made when your number n is 4. It makes a call to the function itself only. Here I am referring sum as func. Okay, so don't get confused. What we are doing is at every step we are making a call to a parameter which is one less than the current parameter okay when I am at 4 I am saying that I will add 4 to whatever answer I will get from func 3 okay 3 will have its own answer same is what 3 will do it will make a call to func 2 func 2 will make a call to func 1 okay and func 1 will make a call to func 0 now my problem statement says find sum of n natural numbers n natural numbers okay so natural numbers start from 1 1 to n so i have to stop somewhere what will be the stoppage of this these recursive calls see if i do not put a stop here the function will keep on calling themselves for infinite number of times that we also don't don't know since it is at every step it is doing n minus 1 the other call will be made to minus 2 and so on and so forth but we know one thing for sure that we do not want these functions our function call should be till func 1 that is where we want the stop to happen stop the recursive function stop the recursive calls at some point so you have to decide at which function I need to stop my calls. So I know that I want only some starting from 1 till the number n. So when I am doing so, I know that the point at which fun uh, recursive function when it is calling itself, it will hit the position when your n becomes 1. So if your n becomes 1, you are doing what? You will return that number itself, return n. That means whatever is the function when you are reaching n as 1, so this will be eliminated. As soon as you reach 1, you are returning the number itself. Now see how returning is happening and how answers are being manipulated. So what I am doing is if n is equal to 1, you are returning n. Otherwise, otherwise you are making the recursive call. I am writing the function again. This is a stop case and here I am writing your actual function what ideally it should look like. So let's say you have some func, okay, int func, it is of type int and n is the integer that you are passing, okay. Let me write it properly. I am writing the pseudo code. Integer n. In terms of Java, int n is what I am passing, fine, that's my function. So my function says it puts a stop if your n is 1 at any point in time you return that number itself that is you return 1 or you can say you return n right. So in other case what you are doing you are simply calling the function repeatedly for n minus 1 and basically you are returning in other cases wait return what you return that current value plus whatever answer will be returned by the recurs recursive call made by this function for n minus 1 now this is your pseudo code have some faith that this is going to return as the answer as 1 plus 2 plus whatever is the sum of 5 integers let's say if i'm passing n is 5 so your answer should come as to that should be 15 right that is what you want to return sum of first five natural numbers is what you can calculate by n into n plus 1 by 2 that is for your understanding i am saying that this is what it should return so that is 5 into 6 divided by 2 so 15 should be the answer now let's see how this snippet of code is going to solve our problem so i made some calls here right so when your function is 1, let's see what it is returning and understand it. When your function is 1, basically when your n is 1, n is equal to 1, you will return 1. So this 1 will be returned to the function that made call of func1. So func1 was called by func2. So it will return it some answer as 1. 
one will be returned to func2 and func2 will do what func see whenever you hit the base case now let's understand that this is the base case this is what you need to understand base case in layman terms can be understood as the stoppage stop point or the stop condition where you want to terminate the recursive calls otherwise recursion will keep on going and it going for infinite and it will reach at some point in time it will give you stack overflow now what is stack overflow at that part i will come when i will be discussing memory management okay so this is the base case so whenever the function reaches the integer 1 right as its parameter it is returning one and answer is always returned to that function which called the subsequent function so func1 func1 was called by func2 right but it is also doing something else it what it is doing it is also adding n before it calls it is also adding n so since n for this case will be 2 right Two made a call to func1 which returned its answer as 1. So this answer will be added to 1 and this shall be returned to what? To the function that called func2. So n now becomes basically n was 2 and 1 is added as its answer. Okay, let me write it properly. So n was 2 and your answer that was returned by func was 1. So 1 plus 2 will be returned to function 3. The call that the function that called func2 was func3. So func2 will return its answer which will be current integer 2. 2 plus whatever answer it received from func1 that was 1 that is equal to 3. So 3 is what it returns to func3 right. Now let's see. So func3 now has an answer from its call that is 3. So what it will do? It will since n is 3 which is not 1 that is why you are going to execute this line of code. So it will return you its integer its parameter is what? It is 3. So 3 plus 3 plus what the answer it got from func n minus 1. So n is 3. What is n minus 1? That is 2. So func2 returned you 3. That you are adding to your own answer. That is n. So 3 plus 3 comes out to be 6. And 6 is returned to the function that called func3. Right? So let's understand it. So this 6 is returned to 4. That will be your answer 6. Let me write it properly. Okay? So this 6 is returned to func4. That is the function that called it. Now for func4. See we come at func4. n is 4. Execute the lines of code. We come at first line. n is equal to 1. Our n is not equal to 1. Because n is 4. So you go to the next line of code. Next line of code says you return that current value. That is n is equal to 4 at this stage. And whatever answer your func4 4 minus 1 func 3 returned you so func 3 returned you 6 and you add your own answer that is n in this case is 4 so you add 4 to 6 that is 10 and that is what you return to func 5 that is the function that called func 4 right now when you are at 5 again you come at the first line of code is n 1 no it is not so you will not execute this first case you will come at another case that is return that current value n in this case is what 5 and 5 will add to the answer that is returned by func 4 so what is returned by func 4 10 so 10 plus 5 15 is what func 5 will return now func 5 is being called by some function in the main function main method so main must have made call to this function to which it finally returns 15 and that is what we will print as our answer i hope this much is clear to you all so what did we do did you understand this thing that first condition first condition is not this one that recursion is the procedure in which the function keeps calling itself repeatedly in the same pattern in the same pattern so at every step n minus 1 is being call is being made to this function and we are doing some operation to return the answer okay first thing that you need to understand is that every function must be returning an answer to the function that is that it is being called by okay so that is important to understand 
also understanding how recursive recursive calls are being made and how the values are being returned so initially i made now let's see memory in memory how it is being stored so i hope you have understood how the recursive calls are being made and how the answers are being stored and returned so other thing we understood was that we need a stoppage we need a stop for stoppage for the recursive calls right for recursive calls otherwise if we don't put the stop what will happen see for assume that we had not put this stop and we simply are returning n plus func n minus 1 you know what would have happened this function will would have made call to minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and would it would have kept go, go, going on and on and on and it will never stop in that case what will happen is that i'm going to explain now what happens what if there was there was no base case no base case condition in that case you know what happens from here we will understand what happens in the memory for every recursion whenever there is a recurs recursion call being made in stack part of your memory right this is your stack for every function call a copy of these parameters and the function is being made in the stack that means a copy of these variables that are being passed as parameters that is being made and added to the stack and as and when as and when we keep calling these functions it is being added to the stack the functions are being added to the stack and when they hit the base this condition they return some value and they get removed from the stack so let's understand what must be happening see the first case in let me copy the snippet of code and then we will see just a second we are returning n plus func n minus 1 okay and what i wanted to explain was let's have a look how in memory this is being done So this is your recursive function. Okay, what is being happening? What is happening here is your your first n was let's say n is five for which you are calling this function, right? So a first function call would have been made to func five. Okay, so func five was created. A copy of this function was being created in the memory that is in stack part of your memory. Okay. Let me just do it properly. Just a second. This is your stack. Okay. And I'm going to show you how memory in memory recursion recursion takes its place okay so initially func5 was being called and it makes a copy of itself and in the stack let's say which will have what what all data it will have it will have what for what value this function is being called and it will have that data a copy of itself will, will be stored in the stack okay function 5 goes and executes the first case n is equal to 1 let's make it smaller let me do it for 3 okay so that we can understand it a little quickly let me do it for 3 calls okay function of 3 or let's say 4 makes a call right it goes at the base condition if condition it does not hold true it goes to the next next line of code which is which says return n plus func n minus 1 now you see a repetition of the call has taken place when a repetition of call takes place the function again for another parameter makes a copy of itself and is added that function 
is added to the stack in the memory okay in the memory another another function call is being made and it takes place right in the last in first out form of the stack that it follows right okay now func3 will go ahead and check n is 1 it this condition doesn't hold true it goes and another call is being made so finally i am just writing what all calls are being made here func1 okay when function 1 was called it goes at the base condition and it returns 1 as soon as we return as soon as we hit as we hit base case condition base case condition that time some value must be returned by value must be returned by function okay returned by your function and that function which is returning value and it will be it will be removed from the stack okay it will be removed from stack as soon as it returns some value okay now one thing as in when the calls were being made to the same function as many times it was being called it was taking up some space in the stack and for each function let's say it takes o1 of space so e each function will take o1 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 and it will add up to take on of space where n is 5 here so although it is constant space but in memory what will happen is at some point in time if we do not put a base case condition it will keep on calling func minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and we know memory when you must have seen getting some errors like stack overflow which means that you have reached the maximum capacity of stack when maximum stack is what stack is also a data structure which is designed to store data right and here it is storing the functions it is co function calls that are being make made repeatedly for different values of the parameter right so at some point in time if we do not put a base case condition it will never stop calling the function and when it reaches the maximum capacity of the stack right you will get an error of stack overflow right so to avoid this thing we use the base case condition now i hope you understood why base case is necessary in other case also stack overflow can happen let's say for example we want n is equal to sum from n is equal to 2 to n is equal to 5 right not not in this case i will explain you another example in which you will see that stack overflow will happen if you never reach the base case condition okay so in that case also if you never reach the base case condition what will happen your calls will never stop or you have not written the correct base case condition that is why it is necessary that you decide the right base case condition that is at what condition you need to stop your calls and return the value okay now let's understand in memory so as soon as we hit one it returns one one is being returned to that function which made call to func one so func one was called by func two now this one will be returned to func2 and function1 will be removed from the stack and now you have func2 on the top of your stack okay so your memory keeps shrinking also as as and when you keep returning the answer your memory sto the store storage of your memory keeps shrinking okay now if it was o5 it becomes o4 like okay now when we are at func2 func2 will return what now see first we make calls then we hit the base case condition and according to this code this is also returning some value what is that value that is the value for which current parameter we are operating plus what answer was returned by the recursive call that was made for n minus 1 right so here current value is 2 it will add to the answer it got from its recursive call that was 1 so basically it will return 2 plus 1 3 to the function that was that it called it was called by okay so function 2 will be removed from the memory now 
now this function 3 will evaluate and return because it is also bound to return some value and what is that value it is bound to return n plus func n minus 1 that means what answer it got from its previous function 3 it will add its own answer and return it to func 4 so basically it will be returning 6 to func 4 func 4 and it will be removed from the stack as in when a function does its task it is also removed from the stack subsequently now function 4 will evaluate its answer that will be 4 plus what answer it got from the previous call that is 6 so finally answer 10 will be returned as your answer if you have chosen ns4 and you wanted to calculate sum of first four numbers so what is sum of first four numbers 6 plus 4 10 i hope the answer is clear to you okay so now we have understood base case condition what is recursion how recursion calls are being made and it is important to analyze how recursions recursion calls are being managed in the memory so it is always it takes place in the stack part of your memory as in when the answer the as in when the task of that particular function is done it will return its answer and get removed from the stack right and finally this will also be removed from the stack by the end of all the calls the stack will be empty again okay now now let's understand it with some more examples let's take some more examples First one, let's take factorial of a number so that you can understand recursion much better. Factorial of a number. What do you mean by factorial? If I say what is factorial of 3, what do you say? Factorial of 3 is what? It is 6. How do you calculate it? So factorial of 3 is equal to 3 into 2 into 1. Multiplication of all the numbers starting from 1 till the number that we are calculating for. Similarly for factorial 4, you do what? 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. There is also one more way of writing it. You can also write it as this way. 4 into factorial of 3, right? Because in let's say I have already calculated what is factorial of 3. You simply have to multiply 4 and you will get that answer. So what is factorial of 3? 6. 6 into 4, 4 into 6. That is what we are going to return for factorial 4. Factorial 5 will be what? 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. That can also be written as 5 into factorial 4. And why we, we know that fact we are doing factorial 4? Because we have already calculated its answer and we know it is 24. So I am simply doing 5 into 24. Right? So that is what I am doing. Now tell me one thing. Do you see a recurrence relation here? In terms of recurrence relation, what kind of a function can I make for it? Can I say one thing? Factorial of any number. Some relation if I were to write for recursion, recursive, recursive function, how can I write it? It can be return, returned as or written as that number itself and multiplied by factorial of n minus 1 if i know what is the answer for n minus 1 factorial i just simply i will multiply my own value and i will get the answer that is what factorial n will give me let's verify this relation so i have written this relation here recursive relation here isn't this the why is this re recursive relation first thing the function is repeatedly calling itself in the same pattern for different parameters okay now let's analyze it if i have if i have n as 2 n is equals to 2 so fact of 2 factorial of 2 will do what it will multiply its own value to factorial 1 so factorial 1 in order to calculate factorial 1 what will i do factorial 1 will be equal to its own value into factorial of previous value that is 0 right and for calculating 0, I will go further and current value and so on into factorial of minus 1. But you all know that if I multiplied 0, everything will be 0. So I want a base case condition such that I never reach at this position. I want to handle it right here only. 
if not in fact here i do not want to calculate factorial 0 i want to know what is factorial 1 in my base case can i write if n is 1 if n is equal to 1 just return 1 for that because factorial of 1 is nothing but 1 itself what is 1 factorial 1 so can i wisely choose the base case condition as n equal to 1 you return 1 and then you calculate the by this recurrence relation by the, by this recursive relation that i have written here can we use the same relation in code to calculate the factorial what if this was not factorial 2 it was factorial let's see let's see how recursive calls will be made factorial 5 so factorial 5 according to this relation it will do 5 into factorial of 4 so factorial of 4 will say i do not know what my answer is recursion recursion only will tell me what is my answer what recursion will do is factorial 4 will be calculated by 4 into factorial 4 now apply factorial 4 on this relation so this is the relation that we are using at every step factorial 5 says 5 into factorial 4 what is factorial 4 do we know factorial 4 no that is that will also be calculated by recursion only so it will say n is 4 multiplied by factorial n minus 1 that is 3 now what is factorial 3 we don't know factorial 3 also so factorial 3 will say again apply the same relation that will be you will be calling 3 multiplied by what is factorial of 2 whatever will be the factorial 2 i will multiply my answer and that will be the answer for factorial 3 but factorial 2 will say again apply the same re recurrence relation and calculate what is my factorial then i will multiply my own value so to get factorial 2 factorial 2 function will say that you will multiply 2 and call factorial 1 now factorial 1 will say wait wait here because i have my answer i have already given recursion a base case which is handling my case so you can get directly my answer from there so base case will return one in this case and one will be returned okay so factorial call will factorial one will say that my answer i do already have so my answer will be repla replaced by now in stack side by side i will also create the stack and what will be happening let's see here also so at every point in time when i started with factorial 5 a function call was made to fact 5 right fact 5 which called factorial 4 right so all the calls recursive calls that are being made that you are adding to your stack for factorial 4 4 you called factorial 3 for factorial 3 you called factorial 2 so all of them will start taking up some space in your stack part of memory then it will call factorial 1 all of till now all of the function calls that are being made take some space in memory okay now factorial 1 will hit the base case condition and it will return some answer now the point is its answer will be returned to what let me just check if you my screen is absolutely visible okay it is so factorial 1 will return its answer to the function that it was called by and it will not just return 1 1 will be returned to factorial 1 and since this is the value that was being called by factorial 2 so factorial 2 will have its answer which is 2 now and this 2 will be returned to that function that it called it but before that you are doing some operation that is you are multiplying some value so basically 3 to the 6 will be returned to this now factorial 3 has its answer which this all of this returned now factorial 3 is being multiplied by 4 that is 6 4 is 24 and it will return this answer to that function which factorial 3 was called by you getting this so 24 will be returned to factorial 4 factorial 4 is then multiplying 5 with its answer so 5 into 24 is what will be returned to factorial 5 that is 120 and that's how you get your answer so let's see here also factorial 1 now let me complete the pseudo code as well if n is 1 you return 1 otherwise you return very simple what was the relation that is what we are writing here n multiplied by that function factorial of n minus 1 and that is your entire code 
okay let me write the function name as factorial so factorial let's say this is your factor int factorial function in fact and you are giving some integer n and it is doing all these operations if n is 1 you return 1 otherwise you return n into factorial n minus 1 that is what it is doing now let's see how the calls were being made when it reaches n as 1 so this Achha, what happens when you call a function right it goes to the first line of the function you're calling the function recursively that means you're making a call to the function and whatever whatever lines of code are written in that function each of them will be executed as as we are handling it so we go to the first line of code we check for this condition when n becomes 1 it returns 1 we will check what is our n in this case in this case it is 1 so when we hit the return condition not condition when we hit the return statement then that answer is returned to the function which that particular function was called by so factorial 1 was called by this function right so as in when we hit the base case 1 is returned to factorial 2 now factorial 2 will actually go here because it was called when it became fact 2 then we have to now execute this statement this statement will return that current value that for that case when n was 2 it will be 2 and it will multiply what answer it got from factorial 2 minus 1 that is factorial 1 it will be stored with this right so 2 multiplied by 1 will be returned to factorial 3 so factorial 3 has its answer from factorial 2 and simultaneously they will be removed from the stack on the top of your stack right now we have is what we have is 3 what 3 will do it will check again fact 3 is called it checks for this condition it is not true so it will return its value 3 multiplied by what answer it got from fact of 2 fact of 2 returned it 2 so 3 to the 6 is what it will return to factorial 4 and itself it will remove from the stack factorial 4 will ask okay what is the first line of code it's not true go to the next line of code it is again a return statement return statement simply returns the answer to that function which it was called by so it will return 4 multiplied by what answer it got from fact of 3 so fact of 3 has returned its own answer that is 6 it will multiply 4 to it and return to factorial 5 so 24 is what factorial 5 has its answer from factorial 4 now factorial 5 will go and execute its function it will check for this condition false it will return this value and this value is the current value 5 multiplied by what answer it got from fact 4 so fact 4 returned it 24 so that will be multiplied and factorial 5 will finally return you simultaneously it was removed it will return you 120 so that is how it is happening okay i hope you have understood the recurs recursion so far how recursive calls are being made and how it is in memory these calls are being handled right so recursive calls are something that are never going to stay forever in your memory part as and when they return their answer they get removed from the stack okay now what is the next thing next example let's take is a fibonacci number example 2 let's take is your fibonacci number problem number 2 let it be is Fibonacci number so what are Fibonacci numbers Fibonacci numbers are a pattern of number in which you have a pattern something like this 1 1 2 3 5 8 13 and so on and so forth 21 I'll tell you how this is being calculated. What is this value? This is 1. What is this value? 1. This value is sum of last two numbers. 1 plus 1 is 2. This Now, how you calculate this number? This is the sum of previous two values. 1 plus 2, 3. How you calculate 5? Go to its previous two values and add and calculate the sum of those values. That is 5 how you calculated 8 so that is the sum of its 
previous two values that is 5 plus 3 8 and that is how you calculate so if i were to write a recursive relation recurrence relation is what you can say isn't if i want to calculate what is the value at nth position so let's say f of n is basically dependent upon f of n minus 1 plus add what is present at n minus 2 okay so i can take it like this fine for our case let's say let it be 0 let's say if in terms of calculation for 0th index you have 0 this is your first Fibonacci number this is your second Fibonacci number this is your third Fibonacci number this is your fourth Fibonacci number so if I ask you what is f of 5 so f of 5 will say calculate what is f of 4 and add it to f of 3 calculate f of now f of 4 will make its own call f of 4 will say I am equal to f of 3 plus f of 2 f of 3 will say i am equal for for me you need to calculate what is f of 2 and what is f of 1 and add the values then f of 2 will say just a second okay so for that it will say for me, you need to calculate what is f of 1 and what is f of 0 because you want to always have previous two values, right? And then add it to my answer and you will have me. This is a typical recursive tree. Very importantly, till now, so far, whatever we discussed, this can be taken as a tree also, recursive tree. This is what how the calls are being made, right? So here, if I were to draw a recursive tree, what it will look like? let us have a look okay so this tree would look like i will write the series again here 3 plus 2 5 plus 3 8 plus 3 8 plus 5 13 or 21 and so on that is your f of fibonacci number right if i ask you what is the fibonacci of 4 ideally it should be this is your first fibonacci this is your second this is your third fibonacci this is your fourth fibonacci so fib of four is three how will you get three it will say now i'm going to draw a recursive tree this is your recursive tree okay which tells you how calls are being made now the repetition of function is being done how it is done let's see fibonacci of 4 will say to get my answer tell me what are the first last two values that you are getting through this function so you calculate what is fib of 3 and what is fib of 2 then you can know what is my answer we are doing this on the basis of this recurrence relation that we wrote f of n at any step is going to be equal to what is value at f of n minus 1 and add it to what is present at f of n minus 2 so that's what we are doing n minus 1 gives makes a call to fib of 3 n minus 2 makes a call to fib of 2 okay further now fib of 3 will say to know what is my answer you need to know what is present at one position before me that is at f you will calculate using fib of 2 and calculate what is the answer of fib of 1 then you can know my answer similarly that's what fib of 2 will say that to get my answer you need to know what is fib of 1 and what is fib of 0 for our reference we can take 0 as 0 this is your 0th fibonacci number okay one will say what is fibonacci of 0 and what is fibonacci of minus 1 and now that that is where you comes the you need of base case condition can you think of a base case condition in this case obviously we do not want the recursive call to keep on calling for negative numbers and so on forever let's put a wise base case condition here i do not want the function to ever reach a negative number let's make a stop whenever we are at zero if your n is zero let me write the let me write this function let's say there is now i'm writing the pseudo code as well fibonacci 
int fibonacci why i'm always putting some data type before this function because that explains what is the type of your return the return type is integer so let's say the name of function is fib and we are passing n okay so what i'm doing is if your n this is the first case that i can think of if your n is 0 you simply go ahead and return 0 okay fine so whenever i commit 0 i return 0 but fib of 1 according to this function it will make a call to minus 1 also we cannot avoid it so am i going to make some base case for negative numbers also or rather i can do one thing let's do let's keep a stop at 1 also see at every step you your function is calling two other functions so let's make a stop for two cases one when your function reaches 0 and when your function reaches 1 and for the rest of the cases i will handle through the normal recursive calls so when n is 0 for 0 you should return 0 when n is 1 you should return 1 for other cases let's say fib of 2 if you wanted to calculate fib of 2 will make call to fib of 1 and fib of 0 if my base case will already handle fib of 1 and fib of 0 if n is equal to 1 return 1 okay i am already handling it in my base case so if i already have my answer it will be 1 it will be 0 so fib of 2 will be what it will be 1 its answer will be 1 and ideally what is what should be fib of 2 fib of 2 should be 1 now fib of 3 if i wanted to calculate it will ask what is fib of 2 and what is fib of 1 so fib of 1 will get its answer from base case it will return 1 it will return 1 and fib of 2 has already calculated its answer using the recurrence relation fib of 1 let's now see so these are my two base case condition and then finally apart from the base case conditions the general case i am handling as return fib of n minus 1 plus fib of n minus 2 that is the answer that will be for fib of n so let's have a look here when i was at fib of 1 function call was made for n equal to 1 it checks is n 0 no n is not 0 it checks is n equal to 1 yes it is 1 so 1 will be returned to the function that it called so 1 will be returned from here when i was at fib of 0 fib of 0 will come at its function call and ask is n 0 yes my base case is handling so it will return 0 now what will fib 2 will do fib 2 will call it will check its function execute the lines first two cases will not hold true it will directly go and return what answer it got from fib of 1 and what answer it got from fib of 0 that will be added and it will return that answer to the function that it was called by so 2 plus 0 will be 2 that is what it will return to fib of 3 okay i hope you are understanding this recursive the tree here so now fib of 3 will check and go to its function and make the calls these two will fail and then it will go and return what answer it got from fib of 2 and fib of 1 okay so fib of 2 ret returned itself answer as 2 and fib of 1 since 1 was the base case it has returned 1 to 3 it has already returned 1 to 3 so 2 plus 1 is 3 is what will be returned to that function that fib of 3 was called by so for, for fib of 4 it has got its one answer from left hand that is 3 it also needs to know what is the answer for fib of 2 so that fib of 2 will further go and calculate what is fib of 1 and what is fib of 0 right that is n minus 1 that is n minus 2 so when fib of 1 is called it will go and execute the function it sees that one is already handled in the base case it will return its answer so one has returned you as one to that function that fib of one was called by okay so further calls need not to be made now i come at fib of zero so in stack what is happening is let me sub c so fib of zero returns you zero 
and 1 plus 0 is what fib of 2 will return because it has got in two answers and it will return the sum of those answers to that function which it was called by it will return 1 so left answer is 3 that is fib n minus 1 for 4 is 3 and fib n minus 2 for 4 is 1 so 3 plus 1 is 4 that is what fib of 4 will return 3 plus 1 there is some mistake I think let me check 0 1 0 and 1 is what will be passed to fib of 3 right 1 then this is 1 this is 2 this left answer is 2 and 2 plus 1 is 3 so this is what will be returned now in your stack what must be happening inside your stack the function calls were made like this see everyone so fib of 2 let me do one thing let me just minimize the size of your tree okay let it be like this leave it let me draw a stack here and what do you observe is that in stack how the operations these recursive calls were being made you call for fib of 4 okay fib of 4 was called and put into your stack let me write it fib 4 okay then fib 4 goes and calls fib of 3 and fib of 2 fib of 3 has made already call to fib of 2 and fib of 1 right and actually there are repetitions of call at every step whenever you are a fib of 3 fib of 2 fib of 1 when you are at fib of 1 basically or 1 will go ahead and call fib of 0 so they are repetitive recursive calls when you are at fib of 0 your recursion will return you 0 and 0 will be returned to all those all those functions that fib of 0 was called by so if you check your it is not see every time it is not easy or it's not very obvious to visualize what must be happening in stack but wherever it is possible i showed you even now you can check for this case but why here we introduced this tree because it's easier to visualize it this way now do you see in your stack actually as many times you are calling these functions they are being created as number of as many times the repetitive calls are being made and this is the reason that when you solve such problems using recursion time limit exceeded comes because there is a better optimized way that my, your compiler might expect and if we can solve we do optimize recursive functions and most in most of the cases we optimize and make a dp call or we optimize it by using dp but that's something that we will discuss later on but let's see what is happening here wherever how many times we are calling any one function fib of 3 you see is called once fib of 2 you see it is called here also it is called here also fib of 1 is called here also here also here also 0 is being called here here so you see how many unnecessary repetitive calls are being made once we have got answer it should be like that answer is stored forever for that particular function but no that will not happen fib of 2 will calculate fib of 1 and fib of 0 again fib of 1 fib of 2 here also will calculate them again no no matter we have already calculated here but it will also make its own calculation so this is how they are taking up space in the memory repeatedly right so that is why at a lot of times this becomes inefficient method because of the stack space and the number of repetition unnecessary repetition that it takes up and increases the time complexity right so this is just one case that i have taken so basically fibonacci number if you go ahead and solve this in any portal maybe geeks for geeks if you use you just try to submit using this method you will get time limit exceeded right so anyways till now so far the idea was to introduce you to the concept of recursion how the calls are being made how memory 
is being used up for recursive calls now let's take one more example and understand the difference between iterative and recursive calls iterative versus recursive so see the main difference is that first iteration where you use a for loop for loop let's say for i equal to 1 i is less than n i plus plus okay you are calculating let's say int answer is equal to 1 and you start your iteration from 2 and you do answer is equal to answer multiplied by i that is what you are doing for factorial and finally you return answer so your answer must be stored with some factorial of n if let's say n is equal to 5 it will give you what is factorial 5 and in recursion we saw that we are putting a base case condition if n is less than or equal to 1 right you return 1 or don't even go for that if n equal to 1 you return 1 right and then for other cases you return n into factorial of n minus 1 right so that's what we are doing for this factorial in recursion so what is the difference between these two the difference first things you need to understand is that for iteration for iteration you have a you just need to check if this condition holds true or not you just check for condition and corresponding to that condition if it holds true and the condition is what i should be less than n as soon as it exceeds n it will come out of the loop your iteration will stop and you will finally return the answer that is the only stoppage for iteration and the stoppage for recursion is the base case condition that you are yourself introducing base condition now now the iteration the issue with iteration is that it takes in recursion it is just a line one line of code here obviously it is also one line of code but in further cases what will happen if there are lot more things to handle recursion one line see this one line is doing so many things it is actually calculating factorial of all the subsequent numbers let's say starting from 5 till 1 and we, it is actually hidden the what it is doing that we have understood understood using the stack in memory how this is happening but what happens in iteration that it goes and calculates each and every step explicitly and this is the reason the number of lines increases although iterative is considered to be better approach than recursion because here the use of space is o of one no space memory no memory is being used in iteration do you see any memory being used here no just one variable is used which always keeps updating the answer as and when it goes into the for loop whereas in the recursion a stack memory is being used and it goes and calls the recursive functions and removes them only when it returns its answer so that stacks keep filling up although it shrinks its size but at most it takes the memory in space to be of o of n right in this case so these are some cases in which in which we see that recursive is very obviously not very efficient but there are certain ways in which iterative will not help us that is why we go by recursion method now let's take some real life examples uh, or examples in which which you must have studied or will study in further sorting algorithms there are few sorting algorithms that make use of recursion one is one is merge sort another one is quick sort which makes use of recursion then there is one searching algorithm which makes use of recursion that is binary search right so these are certain algorithms sorting algorithms and searching algorithms which make use of recursion if you remember them or if you've studied them you can recall how recursion calls are being made for these functions to get the answer in other cases they are, there is this bfs in traversals of tree tree traversals we make use of recursion in tree traversals we make use in so these are some very obvious examples in which recursion calls are being made now coming on to the last very last topic tail recursion is nothing but very easy for you to understand 
tail recursion is that recursive function it is that recursive function in which recursion is the last step recursion is the last step now you will say what is what does that mean so if i show you this function not this if we go back to what we discussed in this you you had seen that fact this function what was it it was returning you the sum okay then we wrote factorial what was it doing it was returning you the factorial of number what is the last line of this function it is this but do you see one thing it is not actually the tail recursion it is non tail recursion now what do you understand what do you mean by this let's see had it had the recursive call been like this let's say you have some func you have some print function print function it takes n and prints from let's say if n is 5 it will print 5 for then 4 then 3 then 2 then 1 so what it does is it checks for a base case if n is equal to 1 you return that means you don't do anything just simply return then you print system dot out dot print that number okay and then you make a call to the function again that is func n minus 1 you make a call again okay now what has what has happened in this function now this is an example this is an example of tailed recursion this is your tail recursion this example is tail recursion why if you check this function the last statement of this function is just the recursive call itself it is not doing anything after that recursion and how do we decide it see what must be happening here is when n was in your memory you will understand it by memory or let's draw a memory only so func of 5 was called it checks for base case condition and then what it does in in console it has printed this 5 okay then since 5 was printed and you don't have to do anything it's a void type of function you have simply printed 5 what do you do your func now will be it will be called as func 4 do you see one thing is function returning anything it's not returning anything you you at every step as and when you are printing you come to the next function call you actually don't need to put that function because see in subsequent steps this don't wait for this function to return anything because it is not going to return you anything do you think func5 was returning anything no it just had this task as and when we are proceeding to the lesser number it is printing that number and going to the next recursive call so when it goes to func4 i go to func4 it checks for base case it doesn't hold true it goes and prints 4 to your console and then it goes and make a call to func3 we don't have to wait for function to stay in the stack and then call other functions and then they are returning it's not happening here your functions are not returning anything to the previous function do you see that dep dependency here no this is the re reason this is tailed function and the previous functions that we discussed above were not tailed function because every function was dependent on some sub subsequent recursive call which was returning its answer then it was removing from the stack but in this case as and when you enter that function now func3 is called as and when you enter you follow you just execute the steps of the function now 3 will be printed because i have written this step here and right after that step i am making another call and before i make another call i will also remove it from the call so at any point in time maximum space that i am using is o1 so tail recursion is better better than non tailed recursive recursive call because in terms of space it 
द कंपाइलर डजेंट हैव टू वेट फॉर एन नंबर ऑफ रिकर्सिव कॉल्स फॉर देम टू रिटर्न द आंसर एंड देन रिमूव फ्रॉम द स्टैक सो इन टर्म्स ऑफ ऑप्टिमाइजेशन ऑल्सो इट इज बेटर द कंपाइलर डजेंट हैव टू लुक फॉर सो मेनी फंक्शन कॉल्स इट सिंपली कॉल्स वन फंक्शन डज इट टास्क एंड रिमूव दैट फंक्शन फ्रॉम इज मेमरी इन मेमरी पी ओ वी ऑल्सो एंड द कंपाइलर पी ओ वी ऑल्सो इट इज एन ऑप्टिमाइज रिकर्सिव अप्रोच एज कंपेयर टू द नॉन टेल रिकर्शन ओके द अब प्रीवियस एग्जाम्पल्स इफ यू रिमेंबर इफ यू रिकॉल दैम ईच ऑफ दैम वर डिपेंडेंट ऑन सम आंसर फ्रॉम द रिकर्सिव कॉल्स दैट वी वर मेकिंग हियर इट्स नॉट डिपेंडेंट इट विल जस्ट कम इन टू द स्टैक इट विल डू इट्स टास्क इट्स टास्क इज टू जस्ट प्रिंट फंक्शन टू वॉज कॉल्ड इट विल चेक फॉर कंडीशन फॉल्स इट विल गो एंड प्रिंट दैट करेंट नंबर एंड टू and it will remove from the stack and make a call to func1 because even if i keep in the stack it will have no use to do it will have no task to perform func1 will go it will hit the base case condition and also important thing you see one thing if i simply return here the answer will be this and i will finally come out of this all the calls that are made because there is no call to be executed in the stack func1 will be returned because i have put return here so values will be printed from 5 to 2 but i want one also so you have to actually modify your base case and make a condition n to be zero so when n is zero that time you return the and that is when you actually come out of the entire function when func is one you go and print one here and then it will be removed from the stack currently now you will be calling func zero func 0 will be called func 0 will go and execute n become 0 it returns it returns that means you return because there is no return to what the main method main method must have called this function you will return to main method and by that time you have printed all the answers that is what you want because there is no other function so i hope you have understood why tail recursion is better than non tail recursions because it does not have any dependency on the further recursive calls that are being made it just calls makes some operations like these and then it, it that is why it has no need to keep itself stored in the stack right so th this is the reason now this is all about this first lecture today we can go and solve these problems using these pseudo codes it's actually the entire code that we wanted and just before we move ahead you can recall from what we discussed here and the homework for you will be that you have to which ever examples we discussed here so this is the explanation part right we understood basics we understood base case we understood recursion how it is being stored in memory we understood the difference between recursion and iteration and we understood tail recursion so in order to understand all of these things i took few examples so the first example was printing n numbers then factorial of a number other was fibonacci number and the last one was printing n numbers now i am giving you some homework questions that you need to do importantly first thing is go to any compiler you can go to gfg okay solve first was or go to any compiler eclipse you go okay you have to solve first thing is print n numbers not print sum of n numbers sum these are the problems that you need to solve sum of n numbers and in the next lecture i will be i will be coding them i will be writing the program although i have already written them in the on the blackboard while explaining and that is all the, that's not even pseudo code that's the complete code but okay i'll be coding it in before we start with the next lecture but before that i want you to do them because we have already discussed this sum of n numbers that is you have to let whatever function you will be writing if i am giving sum of four so you should return me what is sum of four numbers so that will be four to seven Then I think right. So that is what it should return if you call this function. So this is one program that you have to write. Then you have to write factorial of n numbers, factorial of nth number. Then Fibonacci nth Fibonacci number. Calculate nth Fibonacci number all using 
recursion and a Fibonacci number. Then other last example was print numbers from print will be taking some n and you have to print it one two three no comma you can give just some space and let's say if n is five so till five there is this one way that you have to print the dis the one which i discussed was printing it in this way it was printing five first then four then three then two then one so i discussed this way of using recursion such that you are printing but i am asking you to write a recursive function such that you will be printing it in this way so just try all of these four things yourself and in tomorrow's lecture i'll be taking up and write the code and you can verify okay so that is all for today thank you everyone bye bye